most of you are probably very familiar with something called passive noise reduction. Um, passive noise reduction is basically a very fancy name for what is nothing more than blocking sound with a physical barrier. So um, hearing protection, for example, is a form of passive noise reduction where you're simply putting something in your ear to stop sound from entering it. But then there is also a technology called active noise reduction or noise cancellation, which is when you're actually using an active device that uses power uh, to cancel out the sound somehow. This is used a lot in these noise cancelling headphones that are on the market. But for some reason, these noise cancelling devices are very bad at cancelling out higher frequency sounds, such as people's voices. And in this video, we're going to take a look at why that is the case. So why don't we start off by quickly reminding ourselves of what a sound wave actually is. Sound waves are not waves like normal waves in water that go up and down physically. Instead, sound waves are pressure waves in the air. So the, the way you can see this is a sound wave is simply regions of high and low air pressure propagating through space. So um, when you've got an ear right here and a speaker producing sound on the other side, the speaker is pushing the air back and forth, creating positive pressure and negative air pressure. And these positive and negative air pressure regions, they move through space like waves. They roll through the air, essentially. And then they hit your eardrum, they vibrate the eardrum, and that's registered by your ear. And the faster these vibrations are, the higher the frequency of the sound. Now, how do we perform noise cancellation on this? Well, of course, passive noise reduction is easy. We're just putting, putting some kind of barrier in between the ear and the sound source, blocking these vibrations. And preferably, that's some sort of soft material, because soft materials are good at blocking sound. But how does active noise cancellation work? Well, with active noise cancellation, we simply place a microphone in the path of this sound wave. And the microphone picks up this sound and translates it into an electrical signal. That signal then goes into an amplifier, which amplifies it and sends it to a speaker. But there is a twist, quite literally. There is a twist in the wires of this speaker. The speaker is hooked up to the amplifier in opposite polarity meaning that it will produce exactly the opposite version of the original sound wave. And that means it cancels it out, of course. That's how this works. So when the original sound, when the noise um, generates positive pressure, at the same time, the speaker, the noise cancelling device, generates negative pressure. And positive and negative cancel each other out, and it becomes zero. And that way we can theoretically cancel out all of the sound. And this is then placed into a pair of headphones. So we place a couple of microphones on the outside of the headphones, registering the noise that is coming in. And then the speaker of the headphones plays a, a sound wave that is exactly the opposite of that. And that cancels it out. So in theory, this cancels out all of the sound coming in from the outside. Then why are these headphones so bad at cancelling out high frequency sounds? Well, that has to do with the wavelength of these sounds. The wavelength is the actual physical length of these sound waves. So we just talked about these positive pressure regions and negative pressure regions propagating through the air. Well, the wavelength is is how long these regions actually are. And the wavelength can be calculated using this formula. It says that the wavelength is equal to the speed of sound, which is always the same, divided by the frequency of the sound. So for example, a 100 hertz sound wave, 100 hertz being the frequency, of course, gives us a wavelength of about three meters. So that's a pretty long wave. You can imagine that when this sound wave passes through the headphones, it's going to be quite straightforward to cancel it out. Because when the microphone registers high pressure, the pressure at the speaker of the headphone is also about the same, because that wave is so insanely long. But the trouble comes when the frequency is higher. With a high frequency sound, the wavelength is very, very short. 
And this is the problem, because now what can happen is that the pressure at the microphone is actually pretty high, but the pressure at the speaker, which might just be a centimetre away from the microphone, could, ac could actually be different. So we could have a peak at the microphone, but we could have a neutral spot or even a valley at the location of the speaker. And that's the problem with high frequency sounds. That's why these noise cancelling devices have trouble cancelling them out. It means that when you have a high frequency sound coming in, this speaker is not producing exactly the opposite signal, and in the worst case, it's actually producing an in-phase signal, making the noise louder. Well anyway, now you know why noise cancelling headphones are so bad at cancelling out higher frequency sounds. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.